Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo flawless run on the Shattered Throne dungeon. Now, as you can see, I'm using it on uh, Hunter 3.0, Solo 3.0. All fragments and aspects are shown at the start of the video. Weapons, I'm going to be switching uh, weapons quite frequently. I'll be using Wither Horde for most of it, but each of the weapons I switch to, so I'll be switching to a primary sniper, I'll be switching to for one section. Strident Whistle, I'll be switching to Glacial Chasm. And Storm Chase, I'll be switching to Lament. Now, what I'm starting with is what you see here. That's the loadout I'll be finishing with as well. Star Eater Scales are the exotics that I'm using because obviously I can overpower my my super, which will help for certain parts. Which, to couple with that, I have a mod on the helmet that if I get double kills with... Uh, an element match in my subclass, I'll produce an orb, so the strident whistle, which has incandescence on it, so pretty helpful for, a uh, little bit more helpful for Ag clear, I think. I can't remember if the strident whistle I'm using now has got incandescence on it, or if it's got explosive payload. I think it's got incandescence on it. So, this first area is probably where the most kind of, you know, uh, where you've got to remember the, mo the most. The rest of it, you just kill and move forward type of thing. In this area, you've got basically eight uh, labyrinth architects. That's what the, the the elite enemies you've got to kill are called. They're in different locations across in this first area. Uh, you, once you kill one, a symbol will appear. There are six. Well, there's actually seven symbols. A symbol will appear telling you which symbol you've got to go to next to kill that labyrinth architect, and then they'll, that'll be just another symbol that you've got to go and kill another labyrinth arch architect so i didn't really want to i wanted to put a map in here just kind of like a crude map uh but i didn't i didn't want to use someone else's badly made map so i made my own badly made map so this is the first area this is what i call diving bird right so this is the area where you'll kill the first labyrinth architect and it's the area where you will finish and kill the last architect so once you get close enough, you're going to, as you can see here, respawn and restricted. You're going to clear some of the ads. You're going to clear the ads and the architect here. Now, any legendary weapons I've got on, I'm using uh, Taking Spec on. Because what Taking Spec does is it does, across the board, 10% damage against all Taken. You can see here I've got incandescence on you. You can see the explosions. Now, it's been a while since I've done the Shattered Throne, so... I, I, I kind of forgot what I used and how I'd done it, so I, the first run I'd done was pretty sketchy. I had to remember what I was doing, and then and then I got got this run done. Once I knew what I, you know, remembered what was what and where with it, everything was. So, we've cleared that enemy. See, we've got single fish. We've cleared that enemy. I'm picking up the orb. Star Rita scales obviously overpower your super, but you get more super back on each orb. So, this is Diving Bird. When you look to the right, there are three symbols on the right, three left. On the right, you've got single bird, single fish, and W snake. And on the left, you have two fish, fire breathing dragon, and infinite. And just to help you, this is the badly made map. So if, if this is going to help, show us what enemies are at each symbol and where the symbols are roughly. So we've got single fish, so that's out to the right. Every time you, when you leave this section, when you leave Diving Bird, which is the middle, or the Ingress is its actual name, I think, uh, you're going to get a wave left and right. The first time you come out, you'll get this wave of ads. Now, when you go up to Single Bird, which is kind of up to the, the left, it's the, the tower up to the left of here. When you get Single Bird, uh, you will, uh, you'll get a wave of ads up there as well. So, be prepared for that. Just up to the left there. So here we are, we've got, there's what architect. So what I like to do is just kind of, these areas, especially with, the, you know, when you're kind of open, snipers can kind of hurt. When you do damage to him, he will always put that bubble up. Uh, and, and you will have the, those snipers, you see those snipers there. You will have those snipers dotted about. There's a couple on each side. Uh... I, I like to clear the enemies because as long as the enemies are up, you're still going to be getting those taken eyes and it's not fun to be smashed by a turret constantly. So there we go. He's put his bubble up. Now, now he will... Uh, uh, 
kind of when he puts his bubble up like that, he'll stay in his bubble. He's not a danger to you, but you can't do any damage to him unless you run in and put a weather horde on him. Now we're going to the other side. We are going to uh, we're going to fire breathing dragon now. When we get out of this other side, we are going to have same thing. We're going to have a bunch of ads uh, that will appear as soon as we get through here. So I put a weather horde up there, and then we'll put a weather horde down here and just let the ads run into it. And there we go. Pre pretty straightforward. And as I say, there's actually there's six symbols out with the center area because you do the center area twice. There are six symbols you've got to find, uh, and just just be prepared. That, that obviously, as I put, there's an arc, there's arc and the solar shields. So I try and leave my super for the the solar knights. And that kind of takes care of them. And the solar knights you'll get as as I put in the, the, the badly made map. There's one. Just put my super right on him. That should take care of him. Uh, fire breathing dragon. Aptly. As a solar knight. And when you when you finish with the other the other symbols, when you go back to the center to do a uh, dive and bird, then you will also have a, a solar shielded knight. That's right at the end. So, again, it's just movement, you know, making sure you you know where you're going next, just to make it as, as, as efficient uh, as, as you can. You can see I ran up against that wall to show you. You can see the red on, on the map. That's because they are through the wall. You go down, drop down uh, below this kind of pathway. That pathway takes you up to a single fish, a single bird. On some of them, on two of the... the, the, the the areas you've got to go to, you when you get up close, you'll get an enemy that kind of spawns in. This one, obviously, and the other one is two fish. You'll get a solar shielded knight that will that will spawn in. So this is our. This guy can be quite annoying because you can't you can't really put a lot on him because the minute you do, unless he's pushing you like this, the minute you do, he uh, he'll just teleport out the way. Luckily, he was pushing us so. You just put a couple of other shots on him. I don't know how much health he's got. But now I know he's got none. And there's also a sniper up top there, so we'll take him. So now we're on infinite, which is over the other side. This is an arc shielded cabal. So we'll deal with him when we get over the other side. So again, it's just about knowing where to go. If you use the, here the ingress, if you use this as your base and you know what what is on the left hand side what is on the right hand side it's kind of difficult to get lost after that so if you know that you've got three left three right you should be good so this is fire breathing dragon and you go past that and along this kind of walkway to get to infinite now as soon as you jump on one of these pathways you're going to get snipers so I, I like to do a bit of work before i get across there i just like to take out what i can from over here as you can see, everything's burning. That's the great thing about having a bowl with incandescence. Uh, it's 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 very very cool. So I'm I'm just gonna see if I can put a little bit on them with the the storm chaser. Just get a dodge on because we've got uh, obviously we've got classy recovery. I think I might actually be able to kill him, and if you can. Even though I've killed, even when you kill the boss, so I've killed him. You've got to kill all the ads in the area. You see now the snipers are coming up. You've got to kill all the ads in the area to get to get the next symbol to appear. Now, when I say all the ads in the area, I mean all the ads at the symbol, not the snipers above. Just these ads in here. So we'll get in here and we'll kill those. There we go. Now we've got two fish, which is on this side. So once we get this done, that's all of this side complete. So there's still, there's still a sniper around here. I'm just looking to see if I can get past here without getting too, taking too much damage. So we're going to take a bit of a, sh you know, you can take a shortcut. I could have jumped down there to the left. But when you go down here, which I'm just taking you the straightforward path. You're going to go round to the left. And this is two fish. 
And when, there will be a, a, a solar shielded knight that will drop down. And there's where, where Cabal. Now what we'll do is we'll push up and get the knight to come down and the grenade will break his shield and there we go. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't really, he didn't really, uh, you've got to be careful with that, that Cabal trying to blast me off the map. There we go. So that's, that's him done. So now we've got a couple on, a couple on the other side. We've got single bird, which is, once we get over the other side, we're going to be going up. Now, again, talking about ads that spawn in. When you do this, you're going to get two elite cabal phalanx. They're not elite. They're like majors. But no, they are elites because ultras are the bosses. Uh, you're going to get two elite ultra, uh, two elite cabal phalanxes spawn in front of you and two behind you. So I'm going to, I'm going to prep myself for this. Uh, so as you can see, I'm going to put down, I think at the first one I put too far away. I'll drop, I'll drop with the horde there. The two ads will spawn in. Now they do kind of like to do a bit of teleporting. So one of them didn't like the fact that he was taking damage and he teleported back down to the bottom. So there's four, two, two at the back, two at the front. Now when we jump up here and we make our way up to uh, this, this kind of this tower, we're going to get the same kind of wave of ads that we got when we first came into the area. You, know, when you get that wave that you would get when you come out of Diving Bird. So just be, be, be aware that you're going to get another kind of big wave of ads. Now what I'm doing is, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, chain those explosions. The boss is still there. I'm not, not really too fast because these eyes they are worse than the bosses so I like to get the ads kind of dealt with because the bosses go down pretty easy now be careful with these taking man jumping about you've really got to be careful because you know one of them can like do seven or eight teleports and be quite far away and then before you know it they're right in front of you. So now we we've got well last well well last I think this is the last one. And we've got uh actually we've got feast of light times uh times eight. So now I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna put my sniper on and I'm gonna put the lament on and with that as I said I will change scavengers. So I will put on Sword Scavenger and Sword Ammo Finder. Now I use this. Uh, I use uh, Sword Ammo Finder. I'll just go and pick up any special that's lying about. I did see a brick. There we go. Although I didn't need it. Because I'm going to use the sword at the Ogre. And the sword kind of helps you uh, at the the the. the, the the, the beams part so I'm just waiting for this uh, I need him I, I need him to because if you I needed him to to push me a little bit more than what he was because you've got to be careful as well because because they're taking they, they, if he's not attacking me when I fire my super he'll he'll jump out the way he won't he won't stand there and and just allow me to super him he'll jump out the way so that's the first section done. Now we're going to head. This next section is a bit of a. It, it's time consuming for what it is, but it's a bit of a nothing section. You're just going to have tons of snipers, a lot of long range uh, combat. So we'll take out this invisible minotaur right here first. Now what I'm going to be doing is trying to chain some kills with the with the bow, just just to get uh, obviously get some. Uh, some orbs. Try and try and get my my super back. And obviously with Star Rita skills, as I've already said, you do get your super back pretty quickly when you're collecting orbs. So I'm just kind of trying to take care care of these. Uh. There's a couple of invisible minotaurs as well, so you, you, you really want to make sure that you can 
take as much as you can quickly. The snipers here sometimes will do that. Uh, they'll, they'll get a shot off on you and then like disappear into cover straight away. But when you get to the other side, any snipers that you haven't taken, you will get the opportunity when you get to the other side. And when I say the other side, I mean up this next set of stairs. And there is a phalanx up here, a taken phalanx. Uh, so what we're going to do is just put one on him, and then if he puts his if he puts his shield up, I'll shoot his leg, and that'll break him straight away. So now I'm just looking. You see, any snipers that you haven't already dealt with, they, this is when they like to come after you, when they feel like you're at your weakest. There's also, as you can see, there's a couple of still. There's another minotaur that's going to push me, and the minute I start hitting him, he wanted to run away again. So, and you've also, you've got a, uh, a Taken Knight up here. So what we'll do is we'll just pick up this orb. Now what I'm going to do, I've got full sword ammo. He will do this every time. The minute you push him, the teleportation will come out. And then, as you can see, quite, quite easy to take down with the sword. And then take the last sniper and we're good. So once you get to this door, you're going to have a bunch of snipers, phalanxes, and these uh, revenant knights. Uh, so what I like to do is, it's like a shooting gallery for me. I'm not really too bothered about running past everything because the, the, the thing about trying to do stuff, you know, really, really quickly is it's not repeatable. Because there's no saying that, you know, when you're when you're doing stuff like this, there's no saying that the ads will respond the same way if you're trying to run past the everything. So I like to just have a repeatable way to do this, which is kill everything, <laughs> kill everything and then move forward, right? Because these ads will always be in the same places. But, you know, I've seen people jump past all of this and it's like, yeah, okay. You know, I'm, it, it, it's, it's cool to watch, but, you know, not really my kind of thing. I'd prefer to just spend an extra minute or two and just kill everything. Plus, it is like target practice for me, especially when I've got a bow and a sniper. It, it feels very satisfying to be pinging them from from quite far away. Uh, you that jump, the jump right in front of us, it's, it's kind of a difficult. It's not. It's on, on anything, but uh, maybe the warlock could make it. You know, Titan with the boots could make it. But uh, I, al I always got left and in, 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 in kind of shortened the jump for myself. And one of the great things about doing that, uh, you do it left or right, is you, there's a good chance you're going to get some ammo. So you can see, just mopping up the last couple of ads. If I can even hit them. There we go. And then... So that's, that's this wave of ads. There's a few more after this, but next section is going to be... It, I mean, I've always referred to it like the attic because it looks like the type of beams that you see, you know, in, in someone's house, you know, in the attic. Uh, and and there's going to be there's going to be ogres and you know this is where the sword will come in because we can push the ogres with the sword because the sword will allow us to uh, the sword will allow us to to. You know, if we do get hit, because they've got that, that blast. If we do get hit, then uh, we can uh, use the sword to push our way back. So, I am, I'm going to use my sword for movement as well. So, you know, now I've said this before in videos and people have actually said to me, what do you mean by a jump? What's a jump versus a boost? Well, when you press your jump button once, you just get the generic jump. After you press your jump button once on the hunter, then then you've got some boosts. You've got two boost jumps. So you've got your normal jump and then two boost jumps. So as you can see, I've completely bypassed most of this area using the sword. I'm going to have to kill this ogre. And I'll just block his first hits and then just... So what I'm doing is I'm throwing a sword swipe in between each jump. So I press it the first time, I'd have a sword swipe. Boost the next time, I'd have a sword swipe. Boost again, I'd have a sword swipe. So it's the sword almost makes it that you, you, you can go the same distance if you use it like that. 
that you could with sex boosts or sex jumps. So now I'm going to switch to my fusion because the fusion is going to be what we're going to use at, at the ogre. Is it Morgoth or Vorgoth? It's one of the, it's one of them, right? But what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to have to change, I thought I had it on, is I'm going to try and overpower my, uh, my super. And I, this is when I notice I've got solar, the, the solar mod on. And I'm also getting, I'm also using this to get special. So I'm going to change my mod. Uh... So that kinetic, kinetic kills, kinetic multi kills, give me an orb, and that's that is we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get tons of uh, orbs, but we might be able to get a few charges. So now I'm just gonna keep going. I've got I I got two, I got three. Sorry. I could, I'll get more at the end, but you can farm your fusion rifle ammo or whatever. Now, I'm using the Glacial Chasm because it's void. That's the main reason for using it. It's void, and I have uh, sub subsistence. So if I get a kill with it, it reloads that mag back, that shot back in. Subsistence isn't needed. The Glacial Chasm isn't needed, really, but it is helpful to have a void fusion rifle. A void shotgun might do the same thing, you know, you could probably use a, a void sword instead of lament. It's just because the wizards that we're going to be going up against have voids, void shields. So we want to, we want to, we want to max that energy with our own energy. So as you can see, we're almost at, we're almost at the, the ogre, but a couple more adds that we have to kill, which will give us our last couple of uh, last couple of orbs, which will get us times times eight, hopefully. Uh, Feast of Light, which is just about you're just about as powerful as as you can be. Your supper's going to be just about as powerful as it can be, and that's really what you want because when we get to the Olga section, you know I don't really like to dwell on that section. I just like to get it done, and you know, and. Uh, and even without classy restoration, that's really going to help, obviously. Even without classy restoration, uh, I do like to do that section quite quickly. So we we missed that there. And that, I, the, the, you normally find that there's two ads next to each other all the time here. But one teleported just when I was about to, to shoot. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to get them all to look at me now. So that I can get the double kills to get the orbs. So it's two there. There we go. So we've got an orb here. And then we'll have another orb up top. And there's an orb there. So seven. There we go. We'll collect everything we need to collect. Times eight. Feast of light. Now we're at the ogre. So the ogre section. Basically. You've got four points. We're going to drop into, if you see, we're going to drop into the back, right? So you've got back, left, front, right. That's the order we're going to be going in. We're going to be going counterclockwise, right? What I like to do at this section is I like to, so you've got a wizard at each point. You're going to have the ogre in the center. You're going to have the wizard at each point, back, left. You're going to have one at the back, one at the left, one at the top, one at the right. You're going to have two Taken Vandals and two Hobgoblins with each wizard. What I like to do is take out the adds where we are now, which is the back. Uh, I like to take the adds on the left and the adds on the right. So I know as I'm making it round, I've just got the adds at the, at the front to take out. And each other side, it's just the wizard. And when you take the wizard out, you are going to get... Uh, you're going to get a 45 second timer. That 45 second timer is how long you've got to kill the next wizard and pick up the orb that each wizard drops. Each wizard drops an orb which refreshes that timer and then once you've collected all four of them, you will then get a different 
the, 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 whatever it is of burden, I think it's called. So you see here, I feel com comfortable enough I can go and kill this wizard. So we'll pick this up and we get Petitioner's Mark. And we got 45 seconds or there or thereabouts, right? The other thing to be careful of, and you see he's doing it here to me now. I've got a finisher. Is, is the... I'll just do my, my thing. The ads have got even more annoying as, as the times went on. Because now any damage to ads will make them run and hide. And it's, you know... I, I, I'm really kind of... I kind of miffed. Really annoyed with the way the ads are doing this, you know. You see there, we've got Petitioner's Mark times three. When we kill this wizard up here, we're going to get Petitioner's Burden, which gives us 45 seconds to slam. So I've got a dodge here. I'm going to use it. Kill this wizard. I've got 45 seconds. See there, Petitioner's Burden. What I have to do is I have to slam the Petitioner's Burden on one of these... Uh, plant pots, whatever we want to call them. One of these, there's four of them. I'm going to slam here, I'm going to extinguish my burden, which drops the shield from Morgoth, or Vorgoth, right? I don't know if it's Morgoth or Vorgoth. Uh, and then, because I've got classy restoration going, kill him pretty quickly, the, the super would have done an absolute ton of damage against them. So, I, I like to pick, now what's going to happen, I'm going to change back now to the weapons that we started with uh, because that's what I'm going to use at the boss. And then I will realise I've got to change my finders and then I'll change my ammo finders to make sure I'm dropping the correct ammo. So in that section where I slammed the petitioner's burden, I always like to slam back left, back, right. If you're going to two-phase it, which we did back in the day, then I would have slammed the opposite side first so that when I was slamming my second lot, it was the closest one to me. I don't slam the front because for some reason, when you clear the four wizards and you start at the at where we drop in, at, 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 we're saying the back, and then you go left, front, right, there will be another wizard appear at the back with ads. And I'm not sure if you could just go keep clearing and always get another wizard appearing. So I, I like to sp I, I like to slam the furthest away from those ads that have just come in, just to make it even more safe for myself. So, clear the wizard, we're heading to the boss. Now there's going to be some ads, there's going to be a little, bit, uh, a, a, a little bit of clearing work to do, but not much. So I'm going to take this opportunity to, while we're running here, to just tell you about something that I'm doing at the moment. I am currently doing a challenge where I'm... I, I do these, like, every year where I take a character and I build it from scratch and try and get it to GM level. Well, this time the challenge is a little bit bigger. So I'm doing it on my stream channel, which there will be a link to the stream channel in, my, in the description. If you do enjoy my content and, and you fancy checking out the stream now and again, I'm not, you know... I'm, I'm not saying everybody has to, you know, I'm not suggesting, oh, come and watch everything I do. But if you want to show a bit of support, because that's always good. It's always nice to get that support. Then go over and check the channel out. If you like any of the streams or whatever, then consider consider showing a bit of support by maybe following or subscribing or whatever you want to do. Uh, and you never know, you might actually enjoy the stream. So it's the, the channel is live on Destiny. It's my stream YouTube channel. And as I say... I will put a link in the description and I hope to see some of you guys there. And you never know, you might actually enjoy watching the challenge. Uh, solo, uh, 1350 to solo GM with all, all dungeons soloed flawlessly. And I'll be doing it, the, nearly all of it on stream. You know, all the important stuff will get done on stream. I'll never do any of the challenge stuff off stream. It'll always be done on stream. So, now that I've done that, that's my... That's my plug for the year. I don't normally plug myself that, that much, but, you know. I would like the stream channel to kind of grow a little bit and, you know, have, have a regular viewership. It's free, so, you know, it'd be different if I was asking people to pay, then I probably would not be able to hawk this off to anybody. But because it's free, nobody's losing anything, right? So, when we get to the boss, let's talk a little bit about the boss. The boss has a mechanic 
where obviously you've got the boss, you've got three knights, you're going to have a bunch of taken scions, uh, or a bunch of taken mob of taken nasties come in on each side. The mechanic is, you can't really do decent damage to the boss until you've killed the knights and picked up the orbs that they drop. Each one of the orbs gives you a times buff. So once you've got times three, you're doing decent damage to the boss. But once you've killed the knights and you've dropped, once you kill a knight and you've produced a orb, you start the timer, which is a 45 second timer. So it stands to reason you want to kill the three knights as close to each other as you can to maximize the amount of time you, that you've got the damage buff for and that you can deal damage to the boss. In the very center of the room, so you've got Dalakaru, which is Sabathan's daughter, I think. Uh, you've got Dalakaru as the boss. And in the center, you've got this table with like a purple light. That light will take the buff off you, which means you won't be able to do damage to Sabbath, uh, to Dalakaru, but you won't die from having it either. So if you're not going to one phase this boss, make sure you do damage until the timer goes down and then jump on the table to wipe the buff and, and start it all over again. The boss won't regenerate any health. You'll just get the ads and the knights back. The reason I'm including that and being so kind of, uh, uh, kind of concise about that is more to the point. Even if you are going to one phase that boss, make sure, and it's not like I've ever done this, it's not like I've done this in my first run, honestly, uh, if you fire your blade barrage and as you fire it, you go across the table or even just touch the table. It'll take the buff off you, and that's damage phase over. So be careful as much as know it's there, so it's a useful, useful application. It's a useful, you know, thing to know. But be careful that you don't get too close to the table while doing DPS, because uh, you will cancel off your DPS. So plan kind of is, take out all the taken scions. I think they're scions, they're not thrall, are they? Taken scions are the ones that replicate. It's taking sounds, you get a bunch left, bunch right. I'm gonna stick some weather horde down, but the weather horde don't always clear them all. So, you know, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to be using the bow or you know, whatever, just to just to finish them off. Uh we're gonna use we're super on the night, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna weather horde and then uh storm chaser the boss. Once we've picked up the three orbs. You'll know you've picked up all three orbs because you'll have a times three buff. Now, this is this was quite tight for DPS actually, uh, because as I say, I hadn't, you know, sleep on it would be a good idea here as well. Sword would probably be a good idea here. Uh, I decided to go with this just because I wanted to see how well it worked, you know. But I mean, I'm not saying lament wouldn't work if you if you put lucent lucent blade on. And, all the business. So you can see the three knights. You can see Dalakaru Dula kind of chilling in the background, making a TikTok dance video. And then left and right, you've got little doorways, and that's where the little taken nasties are going to come out. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pre-fire, shoot a knight which starts it. You can see now it's started. Now I'll put another one over there. And now what I'm doing is I'll fire my blade barrage at the knights. Trying, I'm going to try and capture. As you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to kill you know more than one with them uh, if I do get a kill at all. I just wanted to damage as many of them as possible. You see that I almost did kill one of them. So now, the minute I pick up that orb, it's, it's the minute you pick an orb up. So what we're doing is I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to put a bit of damage on them all because you only have a set amount of time to kill these guys. So there, I accidentally picked up one of the orbs, so the timer started. So now, we are looking, I've got times two, there's the third orb, now I've got 35 seconds to kill her. Be careful with the, with the, that table, like I was saying. So now, you see there, we're doing 90 odd thousand per round, right? And Wither Horde is going off, so... Just keep refreshing the weather horde, and and I obviously I put I put uh, 
I put, you see there, my radiance has run out because I was getting 90 odd thousand. I put my melee on her to get the radiance. And then, and then that was all good. You seen the crystal at the back? What will happen if I didn't, if you don't one phase, you've got to jump on that table to take the buff off so that you don't die. Because if the buff gets to zero, you'll die. And then you've got to shoot the crystal and then the whole thing starts again. And there you go, guys. That is the solo flawless uh, dungeon on the Hunter. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you did enjoy the video. Uh, good luck on your runs. Uh, I hope to see some of you very soon on the stream channel. And until then, take it easy. And I'll see you in the next video.